Honorable Kofi Adams, this is the position of Lamati Pebo. That verdict of whether there's constitutional crisis or not, he says he aligns with the Chief Justice on this matter to the extent that the, there hasn't been parliamentary sitting, there's what has been described as urgent government business pending. That is a semblance of crisis, and so the Speaker cannot run away from that. Well, thank you for the opportunity and good morning to your viewers and my co panelists. Uh, clearly, there's no constitutional crisis. Why? At best, I can say there is a parliamentary uh, crisis, but not a constitutional crisis. If there is ever anything closer to a crisis that will be linked to the constitution, then it has become so as a result of the actions and inactions of the Supreme Court and being aided by the executive arm. And so if your analysis and understanding is based on lack of prosecution of government business, then it is the very government that is putting its business in jeopardy and not parliament and not the majority NDC side or Mr. Speaker. But I dare say that we do not have a constitutional crisis. At best, I can say there is some kind of parliamentary So uh, a parliamentary uh, crisis, crisis and not a constitutional and not crisis. a constitutional crisis because there's yeah. everything in there to deal with every matter. You talked about who sits where and what have you. You have two main documents to rely on, the Constitution mm -hmm. and our and standing, standing orders. orders. The next thing may be, you say, oh, uh, practice and convention. There is nothing in both the Constitution and the standing orders that says about who sits where. It's just by convention that has been developed that the majority sits to the right of Mr. Speaker and the minority sits to the left of Mr. Speaker. A convention that has been adopted and respected over the period. And I'm saying, and we, uh, standing orders, we are the first standing order that was adopted when Parliament first met in 1993. Mm -hmm. New ones were developed in the year 2000. We have recently also developed a third one. We, we thought it wise not to put anything in all these standing orders that indicates as to who sits where. I am sure it's for a good reason. And what is happening today could possibly be, be, be basis to explain why in all these three standing orders that have been developed and adapted by our parliaments in the Fourth Republic, they thought it wise not to place it in the standing order as to the sitting arrangement. Yes, of course, name tags are placed on the sites based because each member must sit somewhere. There is leadership, there, there's some level of seniority, mm -hmm. and then, of course, you have the back uh, uh, ben benches who maybe have just entered and therefore will sit from, from behind. And as they, they, they increase their term, you move, you move forward. So I dare say that I don't see any constitutional uh, crisis. You see, this whole issue boils down to the understanding that members of parliament from the MPP side and MPP as a party and MPP as a government, the understanding they had of Article 97, 1G and H and applied same in the year 2020, and in November, about 20th November thereabout, or is this 7th November, one mm -hmm. of the dates I'm mm -hmm. not so clear about. Mr. Speaker then ruled that a member of MPP, this was 7th November 7th 2020. November 2020, a member of MPP who had filed to contest as independent has lost his membership of MPP. And by the understanding of MPP outside of parliament, the understanding of MPP 
in government and the understanding of MPP in parliament and Mr. Speaker, that member has lost his right to continue to function in the chamber. And therefore, his seat was declared vacant. That applied. Today, the same provision, the same ingredients are happening. And the same group of persons who proposed that and applied same are telling you that it should not be applied now and that what they are doing is futuristic. But the Constitution is very clear. Uh, uh, if you allow me, you permit me, let me just, not sounding repetitive, mm -hmm. just read the provision. Article 97.1, one. says, a member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament. He says he shall vacate his seat in parliament. And they listed quite a number of them from A, B, upon dissolution of parliament, if he is elected as a speaker, if he is absent like Speaker Dua Jahu, he was a member, he was elected as a member of parliament, then he became speaker, and so he had to resign and by, by election took place there. Blah, blah, blah. Then you get to, for example, H. If he was elected a member of parliament as independent candidate and joins a political party. So you have a member who was elected as an independent candidate and now has joined a political party. And people are saying that, wait, it's futuristic. So are we saying that the constitutional provision that says you vacate your seat, we must wait until the ninth parliament when that independent member in the eighth parliament gets elected as a member of a political party before he vacates his seat? Is that what we are trying to suggest? And so it is this abnormality that has created a kind of parliamentary crisis. And the fact that the Supreme Court that decided to depart significantly from many of the decided cases where they don't go into matters that whose jurisdiction has been so clearly provided for in the lower courts, and this very Supreme Court decided to constitute itself, to go into a matter that has been clearly provided for under Article 99, that this must be determined at the High Court. And at, at best, if there are any issues of interpretation, that well, now be referred to them is what has resulted but, but, well, in uh, all uh, these situations. Uh, 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 th th that question has been answered now with what's happened in the Supreme Court. And I'm saying that, well, that is why, that's that why they, the Speaker is saying... The question of jurisdiction, that's, they have answered it. That's why the that Speaker is saying that if there is any crisis, if there is any constitution, then it's not from Parliament. But it is a creation of what? The courts. Because, look, let it be so clear to all of us that a person who alleges that an enactment or anything contained in or done under the authority of that or any other enactment or any act or omission of any person is inconsistent with or is in contravention of a provision of this constitution may bring an action in the Supreme Court for a declaration to that effect. When uh, Honorable Afenio Makin went to the Supreme Court. What action has been taken? Well, On the 14th of October, when he went to the Supreme Court, and on the 15th of October, when he sought to serve the Speaker and the rest, what action has been taken? Uh, no sorry, action the, the, has been taken. So people who are quoting the Constitution of Article 2 as their basis, no action has been taken for which you would go to the Supreme Court to even question. No well, action has but, been taken. But, but, but he, does he sought to have the Supreme Court set aside the Speaker's And I'm saying that on the, the 14th, on, on the 14th, on the 14th, he when he went, Parliament has not even reconvened. Parliament reconvened on the 15th, Tuesday. 
So Monday, when he went to the Supreme Court, no action has been taken by anybody. It was only a statement that has been made by Honorable Harun Idrisu on a platform in Tamale. On a political platform in Tamale. Mm -hmm. Then you go to court, and when they ask them, he says, so. Oh, he came under Article 2. What action has been taken? For which reason you were going to the Supreme Court? On the 14th, when you filed your case. So clearly, Speaker Bagman is right that he doesn't see any constitutional crisis. If there is anything, then it is a certain level of collusion between the judiciary led by the Supreme Court and the executive but you see, to, 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 to reduce the effect of another arm, which is parliament. The, and, speaker, the speaker sent the application to the Supreme Court to, as it were, having his own stance on their directive to him, and in fact to parliament to stay the execution of his decision, as was so communicated, that these four seats declared vacant. The Supreme Court threw that application out. Then you went to Parliament on Thursday and still went to sit on the side of the, well, the majority. Well, why, why is that? Well, clearly, as I have told you, I am not a party to any action. In the, before the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. Parliament is not a party to any action at the Supreme Court. I have not been served any processes. I have not been served any orders from the Supreme Court. What I know mm -hmm. as a member of Parliament is that on the 17th of October, Thursday, which we have decided as a decision day, the House took a decision that four members Three of them who I would describe as very good friends, close to me. Indeed, the second deputy speaker is one such person that I'm so, so close to. Uh, Kwachiaka sits directly behind me in the old okay. chamber. So another person that I'm so, so close mm. to. And we were all on the uh, public accounts committee. And by the nature of the public accounts committee's work, we do sit outside a lot. And so we are that, that close. Then uh, Suhum, as, uh, Kojo, we were together on the Defense and Interior Committee. Even when he was removed from that committee, he continued to be a friend to that committee and was very, very what? Regular. So three of them are so close to that. But that is what the provision says. On that day, a decision was taken. Mm -hmm. And that decision binds on the House. The only time that we will change it is the House itself going through its processes and procedure to change it. So the and fact that, that was why, for example, mm -hmm. on the 22nd of October, when we met, Mr. Speaker said, we have numbers to do business. And... We had business before us on that day. That day we had business before us mm -hmm. because there was an order paper. We had business before us. But the business we had before us were basically decision-taking business. And we I did see. not have the numbers to take decision because the same Supreme Court have already ruled that Parliament... Your, your decision taking comes under Article 104, which mm -hmm. says more than half of all your members. Sitting. So we did not have that to be able to take a decision. And because one side decided to boycott, the House was adjoined Senate On mm. Thursday, 7th November, when we met again, the House did not have business. There was no business. And... Mm -hmm. The standing orders are very, very, very clear as to what we do. And let me read standing order 216. It says, that's under business committee. The business committee comprises the leader of government business as chairperson. And let me let you know here that mm -hmm. when we say leader of government business, it doesn't mean majority leader 
or minority but leader. Who is the leader? The of person that the government <coughs> identifies and writes to parliament that leads government business is the person that is leader of government business. Uh, uh, so essentially, it's Alexander Fenyomaki. So Alexander Fenyomaki is the leader of government business, even if okay. he's in the what minority. Leader of government business as chairperson. The minority leader, the ranking member, the chief as ranking member, the chief whips, and not more than 11 other members. And listen to their functions. Subject to order 67, the committee shall propose the business of each sitting and the order in which the business is taken, except that the House may determine which matters may properly be introduced in the House at any time. So it means when the business committee meet, I won't read the rest of the things. When they meet, they bring a draft business and the House now adapts it and it goes on to the other paper. Mm -hmm. For this very meeting, the business committee did not meet because the leader of government business, who is the chair, decided not to call that committee. And once they did not meet to bring business before the House, no other body can bring business before us because it is they who brings it and then we can amend it and accept it in the order we want it and get it working. I see. On but, that matter, on that matter of, of why there was no business as captured in the other paper, Alexander Fenyomakin was asked that question. This was his explanation and this is what he said he did um, in the respect of asking the clerk and then also uh, explaining why the, the business committee of parliament did not meet before Thursday. Let's take a look. Yeah. Speaker is setting the country on fire. Yes. Yesterday, we, we, we were disappointed with his non reconciliatory posture. posture during this press conference. Indeed, we, the majority caucus, call on Mr. Speaker one more time to demonstrate statesmanship. We want Mr. Speaker to know that although we were not happy on the day he was elected, some of our colleagues perhaps has seen something good in him. It wasn't the NDC that put him there for him to do the bidding of the NDC. Perhaps people felt that he could be someone who would bring all of us together. Yes. There are things that we cannot say into the camera. Say, but Mr. Speaker is hurting democracy. Yes. What Mr. Speaker is doing is to rehearse what the NDC is likely to do should they lose power, to bring chaos, to cause confusion. How can Mr. Speaker say that he respects the constitution but he will not subject himself to the dictates of the judiciary? How can you say that the judiciary is, is, in, is in collusion, is colliding with the president, and you mentioned the president as a person, as an individual? How? What Mr. Speaker is doing is in bad faith. First of all, he submitted himself, subjected himself to the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. And after losing at the Supreme Court, he turns around to attack the Supreme Court. There are important things to do. We have the free SHS bill, which is before Parliament. Their main aim, their main aim is to conspire with Mr. Speaker to prevent the free SHS bill yes. from being passed. And in an unlikely situation where they see the light of day in the election, cancel it. That, oh, after all, there's no law back in it. So, that, that, so I'm coming. So, he essentially, and he makes the point towards the end that to the extent that that memo that was sent to the speaker recalling the house specified a number of items classified as agent business that was going to be the basis for your sitting in fact that was going to be captured as the business for the day so there was really no need to have the business committee meet again that was the explanation that he gave. You see, is that consistent with practice? You see, you see, Afenio Marking is my very good friend. 
but he's been a very bad leader in recent why, days. Why, 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 why do you say that? You see, our standing orders are very, very clear. And let me read standing order 215 also for you. Mm -hmm. Before even I move further to explain this thing that he's talking about. Standing order 215 talks about report of committees. And this includes the business committee. It says, the deliberations and recommendations of a committee shall be presented to the House in the form of a report. Two, the committee shall consider and adopt the report prior to the presentation of the report to the House. And the report shall be signed by the chairperson and the clerk to the committee. That is why the business committee report, those times when we are sitting normally every Friday, mm -hmm. is signed by the chair and the clerk, then they bring the report. The chair reads it, then the house now adapts it. Three, a motion shall be moved by the chairperson or any other member of the committee upon presentation of the report to the house for consideration and adoption or otherwise of the report. That recall petition, one, was not signed by the chairperson of the business committee. It was signed by the deputy, uh, second deputy whip of the MPP uh, uh, group mm -hmm. to the speaker. And so that cannot be considered as a report of the business committee. At best, those persons who sponsored the recall would appear before the business committee and push their issues to the business committee for business committee to adapt vote on and prepare a report that will come under the signature of what? The leader of government business who chairs that committee and that is what will be presented to the House. No, and you, the chairman alone, don't have the power, don't have the authority to just suggest that because there was a recall petition, that should become the report of the business committee. That discussion and deliberation must happen at the business committee meeting. If the business committee decides that we are adopting the petition that was presented by the 15% as our business, that is their decision. Then it will now come under the signature of the chairman of the business uh, committee, who is the leader of government business. Mm -hmm. Afrenio Makin failed in doing this. Two, so this cannot, is not, cannot, let me just finish this point. Mm -hmm. Two, this is not the first time we've had a recall, even for this year. This is about mm -hmm. the third recall we have had this year Correct. and in all the other recalls the business committee has met and presented the report which was used in preparing the other paper for that day so why is he now telling us something new lawyer martin pebu is correct what happened was that they could not marshal their numbers you know they that. had i know this for a fact you know it for a fact. I know it for a fact. That they, they could they not couldn't look, marshal their numbers. Look, when we have caucus meetings, plan caucus meetings, it is placed on our what? Platforms. They have mm -hmm. their uh, WhatsApp platform mm -hmm. as their group. We have ours. So, mm -hmm. and SMS is further even sent. Mm -hmm. I see. How did it happen that a very regular and, uh, MP who is so, so, so careful about the way he does his things like Atachia, will move to the chamber and only get out because he did not see his colleagues there. How will Andy, as for Andy, I saw him because of where I was sitting. He was in some light blue kaftan. So as he was walking even out, I tried to call him that he should come back and come and take his seat, but he didn't hear me and he went out. So he's right when he said he went to the chamber and when he realized that his colleagues were not there, that was when he walked out. And three, four reasons have been advanced by the MPP side. One says they were having caucus meeting. That was why they were late. Another one says that they were waiting for Mr. Speaker to rule and say, give direction to, for the uh, uh, NDC side to move from where they were to the other side before they will come in. And that they didn't want confrontation. Yet another says Speaker is in contempt of court. And so... Who is telling you the truth? One incident, three different reasons being advanced. One says they were waiting for Mr. Speaker to ask the NDC side to move to the left before they will come. 
Another one says, oh no, we were in a caucus meeting. The caucus meeting took so long. And, and we didn't know and we didn't know about it. We didn't know about about it. Yet another says that they will take the speaker on for uh, not ordering. The speaker doesn't order where we sit. It is not the business of Mr. Speaker. If you look at the functions of Mr. Speaker, it's not the business of Mr. Speaker to determine where members sit. We sit according to our numbers. And per the 17th October decision of the House, we have become majority, and by convention, we sat where the majority is supposed to be. A, 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 decision, a decision that the Supreme Court has also well, continuously you see, stated is a position that you see, you see, the, its application be stayed. You see, but the, you still the, want to go the, by it. The Supreme Court spoke on the 18th. Parliament had already decided on the 17th. Parliament is an arm of government that has procedure and processes that is also coming from the constitution the standing orders takes its strength from the constitution but it was we the have, same argument that, that the speaker went to the and supreme I'm saying court that with, well, and that was the thrown fact, out the fact that the supreme court have said something doesn't yes. mean that parliament has been communicated to appropriately and parliament has taken steps to deal with that so called communication i would rather will urge the supreme court to go faster and determine the the constitutionality or otherwise what article 97 1 g and h really means that's 11 and when, november once, once they Monday. do that once they do that then they can now make declarations and give appropriate orders but for me this interim orders to an arm of government parliament that stop your processes don't do anything because we are considering something May, it doesn't wash with my understanding of the constitution. It doesn't wash. Look, <laughs> parliament is the only place where politics is really allowed. If you take the executive, the executive, when you get elected by 50% plus one, you are supposed to encompass every, every other uh, person. You go to judiciary, they are not even supposed to have been partisan at all. But when you come to parliament, that is where you have all shades of, of opinion, and that is why the Constitution is so clear in trying to protect that right. If you look at Article 2, look, it says that Parliament cannot even legislate to have a one-party state. And it is to protect that provision in the Constitution that, for me, I think that Article 97, 1, G, and H was also added, so that you don't have a situation where a particular party wins and is in the executive, then he use all kinds of opportunity to lure others to leave their parties completely and turning, but in terms of function, turning parliament into just a one party state. To avoid that, that is why that provision is there. It is not for any future futuristic thing. It is to protect the Article, article 2 provision where it's, or is it 3? I think 3, Article 3. I think it's Article 3. Parliament shall have no power to enact a law establishing a one party state. Article 3. So it is to provide, to protect this, that for me, 97 is so clear. And the MPP's own constitution. Look, if you go to 55-7, um, the last point that I make, and I know that you are dying, 55-7, uh, okay. before you register a political party with the Electoral Commission, the first item that is demanded of you, if you look at the constitution, Article 55-7, mm -hmm. it says, for purposes of registering a prospective political party shall furnish the electoral commission with a copy of its constitution. If you take the MPP constitution that it furnished the electoral commission to register as new patriotic party, it's in the forfeiture of membership that when you endorse another candidate, you endorse another uh, uh, party, or you decide to contest against the official candidate of the of the party, mm -hmm. you you automatic forfeiture of membership. So your constitution is is recognized by the national constitution because before you register as a political party, you must submit that to the electoral commission. It is because we want to be sure that everything in there is in consonance with what the national constitution and that has been accepted so why now come to tell us that, oh that is your constitution is not national constitution article 55 7 okay. takes care of that 